Operation Choke Point is squeezing Bitcoin up to 30K. Question everything, trust nothing. It's your boys, Keeper and Crusader. Hopefully everybody is doing well today. I got to tell you, that was hype. That was hype, Crusader. I like the uh, I like the intensity. So I, I, you get, a, you get a, a golf clap from me on that. That, that was, was intense. <laughs> Ready for it. We've got a lot of big news today. Some really interesting information going on in the background we're going to get into. There's just going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to talk about some CPI data. Uh, we have got Max Kaiser calling for something similar to... Uh, Oh, or maybe exactly what Crusader was calling for yesterday, but your boy Keeper might disagree. We'll talk about that. And then, yeah, Bitcoin is booming. We might get into Coinbase a little bit. We'll see what they got going on. They got some DeFi stuff going on, but we'll get to that if we have time. All right, cool. Uh, first of all, smash the likes. How's everybody doing in the in the uh, in the chat? Unforgettable name, as always, is here. DJ, the infamous Secret Soul Society, is here as well. Hope you guys are doing well. Let's have some fun. Let's get into it. Smash that like. Get involved with Danger Close Alpha if you're not already. Tonight, Crusader, tell the people what they need to know about tonight. Twitter spaces, baby. Twitter spaces. We're talking about bank runs. We're talking about what's happening in the banking system. Make sure you guys do not miss that 9 p.m. Eastern time on Twitter tonight. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a great show tonight on or a great uh, live or a great uh, space, I should say. I got to get the terminology correct for Twitter. It's going to be a great space. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk about bank runs, what that looks like for you, and how you can prepare. We're always talking about preparing with Danger Close Alpha. So be on there tonight. Be prepared at 9 o'clock p.m. All right, cool. Let's take a look at the markets. Let's start there and uh, see what's cracking. So we have got the overall global crypto market cap. Uh-oh, up. 4.16% to 1.12 trillion with the T dollars. That's as high as we've seen that in a while. Bitcoin, baby, 25,162. Crusader, if I'm not mistaken, we were over 26 at some point, weren't we? Yeah, we were. We're at 26,4, give or take. Yeah, that is a big, big move. So we're up above 26. We are down at 25,1 right now. I shouldn't say down. We're still up 3% on the day. ETH at 1739. That's looking good. I mean, guys, through the top 10, up around 3% right now. It was a lot more. We'll see which way we're headed, and we're going to talk about that in the stream today. So let's uh let's kick it off. Let's talk about what do we want to start with? Let's kick hey, it hold off. Hold up, hold up. We forgot about the TA, man. We forgot about the TA. Oh, my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. Let's Show me this. what the here charts are telling you, Crusader. There we go. Yeah, here we go. So as you guys can see here, right, quick and easy, like I said earlier, uh, there's been a few things happening. So let me take, let me turn some of these indicators off first and let me take a step by step, right? So we were in this regression trend on the way up. We fell out of it. This is the weekly candles, by the way. This is the weekly because we wicked out last week and then we came right back in ferociously this week. Yeah. If we jump down to the daily, you guys can see here, right? And let me open up these pivots. You guys can see we were dropping, right? We dropped out, and I said, "Hey, if twenty one doesn't hold, we're going down." And we cut through through this like butter, hit support, and actually this this is the actually the monthly. Let me change this here real quickly back to the quarterly. Uh, bam, there you go. So you guys can see here we dropped below twenty one thousand. We hit twenty thousand. We found support here, and we bounced off in a V shaped situation right here. Yeah. I mean, the MACD has taken off, RSI has taken off. But we've come into some resistance, right? I said yesterday on the stream that we're going to go to 30K. Obviously, I still believe that. I just don't think it's a straight one shot all the way up to 30K. So we hit this midline of the regression trend at about 6, 26,400, right? We've hit some resistance there. And now if I change it to the monthly on the pivots, you guys can see that there is uh some level of resistance coming up here at 27 100 and we were just above that little bit by 26 something so this is going to hit us with some uh resistance we are coming down from it but another thing i can show you guys here is that on the emas just open this up on the emas 
Uh, Bitcoin has this green line right here, right? This green line. Mm -hmm. On if we jump back out to the weekly, sorry about that. Where else is the daily? We jump out here to the weekly. In the weekly, we've been under the 200 EMA for a long time yeah. since uh, June of 2022. We've been under the 200 EMA, and as you guys can see here in the past, right? These are past bear markets of 2020. We were down here when we broke back above it. Bear, bull market, same thing over here in 2019, 2018. Bear market, we broke above it. Bull market, right? Bull rally at least. Uh, so here, once again, as you guys can see, we are just right now, right now. Let me I'm zoom in here. Yeah, we're literally just right above it. We were well above it with twenty six thousand. But if we can hold this, right? If we can hold this two hundred EMA and stay above it, this could be changing the game for bitcoin right not saying we're going to go to 50k by next by summertime but it could be changing the narrative of hey maybe this down here was the bottom like we mentioned earlier the double bottom breaking out of this uh regression trend and we are going to be going up it's not going to be a straight shot yeah but things are changing well you know part of what uh part of the information that's come out that's been good on top of obviously the 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 information that circle is going to cover the 3.3 billion uh the fact that the the government is coming out and saying hey we'll make sure that all of you are made whole was the cpi data and i do want to say before i get into some of this information i personally have talked about this a lot i think the cpi data is uh fugazi i don't like it because it takes out it gives you a false impression of what's really happening with the economy the two main things that aren't in there are energy and food and where are we seeing absolutely massive hikes well in both of those areas and those are everyday things that people deal with you have to buy food to live so why would we leave that out well we leave it out because it finesses the numbers a little bit more yeah but ben ben actually brought up a good point on his live stream today i was watching sorry to cut you off but good. he basically was saying that you know just like you're saying they mess with the numbers and we know the numbers are fugazi because they're always messing with it back and forth yeah. but i think he said that basically he believes they've messed with it so much now that now they can't make the CPI numbers look bad, right? Now they want the numbers to look bad so they can keep raising interest rates. And they're like, oh, snap, it's actually getting better somehow. We can't. <laughs> we're just raising interest rates. <laughs> they push themselves into a uh, in, into the opposite situation of where they wanted to be. That's uh, yep. that's a really interesting thought. Ben's a smart guy. That uh, That's funny. But yeah, so so the CPI data is, is helping this market boom if you want to call it that and again crusader and i uh disagree on some numbers we're going to talk about in a little bit so stick around for that we'll have some fun with that discussion but bitcoin did hit 26 that's a nine month high after the uh inflation information basically it met economists estimates okay the cpi rose six percent in the 12 months through february according to the federal bureau of labor statistics dogecoin eth and Solana rise along. What the heck? Why is this in there? Why did this cut this in here? Hold on a second. Never mind. There we go. The Fed has aggressively raised interest rates to control inflation, but rate but rates are still well above the target. Their interest rates could rise to 5.1% this year, but the bank collapses have complicated those matters. And I want to talk about that a little bit. So the possibility of higher interest rates combined with those those bank, the banks collapsing, right? Has have it has traders, I don't know, recalibrating what their expectations are. Um, we still know that there's going to be headwinds. This is not going to happen overnight. We're not just going to all of a sudden, you know, we've seen a big move quickly, but this will settle down. This is excitement. This is what are they actually going to do? Is it going to happen fast? Are they going to, you know, like like there's there's a lot of things that are just boom, 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 boom. I do think it's going to slow down. So what do we think, Crusader? The the banks are looking like they're going to get some help. It's not going to be an all-out bailout, it doesn't look like. But these banks are in trouble. They have to respond some type of way. Well, it, it's weird, right? Paper. They're setting they're setting a weird president, or president for what's happening here. It's like there's not a bailout, but it's like now there's a term that I wasn't even aware of, a bail-in. And all this stuff. I think they where, just made that one up. I think that's. Dude, literally I don't new. even know if they made that one. I literally up or think not. it's new. I do. I think uh, it's dude, new. But either way, we've known that this in the past two years they've redefined and made up all kinds of words, right? Oh yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did. 
But uh, so they said that the FDIC or whatever is going to fully cover, which is not supposed to happen. They're only supposed to cover up to 250000 but they are going to fully cover every loss from the SVB bank collapse, yeah. uh, which then sets the example of like, well, what if more banks collapse? Are they going to fully uh, bail out those or whatever it is that they're whatever term they're using now if it's not bailout yeah. i mean just fully cover that so i made a video on tiktok yesterday i posted it here on shorts as well talking about how the fdic balance sheet only has about a uh, 216 billion or something like that uh and the entire like banking system is like 9.9 .9 trillion or something yeah basically massive. they can't cover they, they can't. can't cover no. right they only have like 1.26 in cover coverage right now so but the federal reserve has infinite amount of printing so they're setting a bad example they said hey you got caught with your pants down things are bad you're and, but don't worry we're gonna fully cover everything even though you should technically let that bank die but i understand the pain the economy they want to save it right that's yeah. always the excuse but they're not using the word bailout they're not saying what they usually say or what they're going to do so it's just weird man and honestly i think that no matter how much they try spinning there's a lot of narrative now being spun around that you know the the markets recovered very quickly so this was a no event this was a very small blimp on the radar and it's not going to happen again well we thought the same thing in crypto right last year and we saw collapse after collapse after collapse and i think that no matter how much they try to push the narrative that there is not going to be a domino effect here. I think there will be. Yeah. Drop in the chat, drop a one in the chat. If you th actually, uh, I guess crusader, you want to run a poll or, or we just want to drop a one yeah, or two I'll set, in the chat. I'll set, up, I'll set up a poll right now. All right, cool. Set up a poll in the chat. Uh, let's see what, uh, let's see what the people think chat. Make sure that if you just came in, smash those likes. We got a new, a lot of new people that just jumped on. So welcome everybody. We've got to do a little, couple little shout outs real quick while he's setting up that poll. Michael Evan chick in the house. What's going on, brother? We got Kenton as always visionary vet flat smack, John worm. Who else we got up in here? Cozy web, Brett. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Jackie, how are you? Good to see you. Let's see here. Bob Franklin. Hey, that might be, uh, I'm not sure. I'm Bob Franklin. I, that is a name I don't know that I see every day. So Bob Franklin, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Welcome. And then as always, Hazley Jane, we appreciate all the support from each and every one of you. Okay. So the back poll to is it. up. The, the poll, poll is, up. is up. Make sure that you interact with the poll. We appreciate all the support guys. And if you're on live chat on mobile, make sure to just X out of that. It'll, that's how you can smash that like. Okay. So. You said something to me earlier today, Crusader, that was part of something that happened during the Obama administration. I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. I'd love to hear kind of your 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 take on on some of this. Yeah, so I'll share my screen here real quick and share what Operation Choke Point is. Right. So yeah. I'm going to be talking about that here. So if you guys can see here, Operation Choke Point was an initiative right, by the United States Department of Justice in 2013 under the Obama administration. And basically what they're trying to do is they were trying to investigate banks, right, investigate banks that did business with uh, freedom dealers, payday lenders, and any companies that seemed that they believed to be high risk for fraud and money laundering. This is key word here because what do we hear a lot about in the crypto space right now, right? The negative is fraud and money laundering yep. and what have we seen we saw signature bank get taken down right whether they were doing illegal things or not i don't know i can't confirm that somebody else might know somebody else might say something but i don't know that so i can't say that um but the narrative around bitcoin and cryptocurrencies has been fraud and money laundering for a long time oh, yeah. and now with these banks being shut down i think they're setting up the choke point once again to make sure that on ramping and off ramping becomes even more difficult. And we've talked about this before in the past, but now we're seeing it happen live, right, with the banks. And I think they're going to keep moving in that direction with any any crypto bank. We already know that lots of banks in general, uh, if you try setting up any type of bank business account with them and you're crypto related, they either shut you down or they, you know, just don't even let you apply or you're going to have some type of runaround issue with them. Let, all let me the time. Yeah, let me let me actually touch on that because you said it. That's a great point, Crusader. You should you you should know that crypto is a problem for the legacy financial situations. When so when Crusader and I got together to set up our banking, 
I went into the to, to the institution where we started our, our banking and I started to tell them, hey, we need to set up an, just normal stuff. Right. We're setting up a business account. We've got this, that, the third, whatever the case may be. Right. And the, when the woman asked what we did, I said, well, it's in, in cryptocurrency. And all of a sudden, the look on her face was like. And I was like, what? And she was like, well, what exactly do you guys do in crypto? And I asked her, I said, candidly, does it matter? We are ultimately we're, we're in the crypto space, but we're not trying to bring we're not trying to take crypto in and out of your accounts. Well, sir, to be honest with you, it does matter. And that is a freaking problem. There is no reason why. So ultimately, we ended up telling her what we do on here, right? We entertain and we try to educate, okay? So we put in crypto education and they were okay with that. But she told me very plainly and candidly, do not have a bunch of crypto transactions coming in and out of this account. And I, I, I did, I was frustrated with it. I was like, why? If ultimately these are doxed transactions, they're going through, let's just say you run it through somebody that they're okay with, i.e. maybe Coinbase or whoever. What does it matter? Well, it matters because they view it as a threat. They view this as something that's going to take away from their chokehold on the financial institution or on the, the financial world that we are living in right now. And the moment somebody threatens you, you do what? You back up, you get in a little bit of a corner, and now you've got to claw your way out. And that's effectively what it felt like they were doing when we set up that account. I mean, yeah, dude, really exactly right. So back to the choke point situation, uh, that being a problem, we also seen the stable coins, right? Depegging, a lot of people not understanding what's happening with these stable coins. Are they going to be, Are is this all part of the plan, right? The whole theory, is this part of the plan for CBDCs to be kicked in, for government to take over these uh, stable coins? Well, the whole stable coin war scenario is happening. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Um, then leads us to, CZ coming out and saying, well, I'm getting rid of the uh, BUSD, getting out of the stablecoin game and putting it back into Bitcoin, Ethereum and BNB. Um, so that leads us to the point where I think this guy or, you know, they might know uh, ahead of time that, hey, on ramping and off ramping right right now, we this last cycle, we've had it very easy where we can just sit on stable coins in 2018, 2019. Stable coins were barely a thing. USDT had just been around. Nobody was confident in stable coins. Now yep. we've got all kinds of stable coins. Uh, the entire alphabet has stable coins. <laughs> right. Yeah. So everybody's just sitting on stable coins. It's all good. But with that possibly going away or getting a lot riskier with different things coming up. We're going to have to start back. So we're going to have to start sitting back into the actual asset so that you're either in crypto or you're not. Yeah. And, you know, this all goes back to the on ramping and off ramping. What they deem as fraudulent or high risk can definitely become a target. And if, you know, we're headed towards these economical problems that we've been facing already, crypto is going to continuously be deemed high risk and fraudulent. Mm -hmm. And they're going to probably put more, you know, whatever you want to call it around it so i think operation choke point 2.0 i think uh crypto mason said that actually 2.0 shout out to him uh that that's what's going on so we got to be very careful with that keep eyes on what is happening in the financial system in the traditional financial system because it is leaking into the crypto space well and you know what more than more than just leaking it's a full out feels like kind of an attack and i thought i thought about it at first and i was like why would they come after stable coins right people are just putting money there allowing it to you know sit it, it's stable it's it's it gives you stability i was like why would they care about that then i realized wait a minute that has them effectively not using the US dollar. And the moment that people in mass, in mass decide or realize that they don't need to actually use the dollar and they still have something, because here's the thing, most people when they get into crypto, if you ask somebody that's not in crypto, why are you not in crypto? One of the first things they're gonna tell you is it's risky, right? And it is, it is, absolutely, okay? But if you said, well, I mean, are you not at least in stable coins? And, well, what's a stable coin? Well, I mean, it's pegged to, the price of a dollar it stays at a dollar and they're like oh and what would be some other reasons that i could and you start rattling through some benefits of using a stable coin that is not centrally controlled by our government enough people in mass start to figure that out that's why it's the problem and then you add to it oh i can earn interest on something that is also stable what are we turning into we're turning into whoop, banking 
right? And that is effectively what they do not the want. They already don't yeah, have fractional your reserves, right? Yes, exactly. And they already don't have the money to cover. We're seeing that Silicon Valley Bank, I might get this number wrong, but I think it was they had they didn't have 97 per, they had 97% of all of their 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 uh cash that had come in output to work. There was nothing in the freaking bank, dude, like in well, that, Dude, that's thanks to what happened with the fog around the I world. Know. They dropped the fraction of reserves to, to practically zero. To practically right? zero. Yeah. But and what? and on top of that, you they they just they know there's no ever never any consequences. And the executives yes. on Friday, before they everything came out, they all took massive bonuses. They all paid yeah. out their own bonuses. And said, hey, which is, whatever which is we got, whatever cash we got, grab it and run. Yeah. It's disgusting. Uh, the people are always the last, you know, the people, we, the people always take the hit, but we, the people don't get to make decisions on what's happening on a larger scale. Yeah. We just kind of get pushed around. I so. got one more thing to say about stable yeah. coins that was, yeah, uh, that we're sure. talking about it. I was in a, sp I was in a TikTok live yesterday with Joshua Jake and dark horse and all these other guys. Yeah. And dark horse brought up a good point, which is USDC had 3.3 billion tied up in svb right mm -hmm. yep. and when that came out right that's where the dpeg started and it depegged at different price points on different exchanges mm -hmm. like on one exchange it dropped i think down to like 12 cents 12 oh there's a like, flash crash somewhere on yeah USDC. On, on one of them i forgot yeah, which one okay. it was down yeah. to 12 cents uh -huh. but the, the grand majority was like around 80 something 88 cents 90 something cents yeah um so there was a bunch of arbitrage opportunities but then on Monday, expecting us, we were expecting it to get worse, right? They haven't received the money back. They haven't gotten the three point three billion back at all. So why is it that USDC was able to repeg on Monday when, in re and realistically, they still don't have access to that capital? Well, they had to cover it with with what? Circle covered. That's that's that circle came in and said, Hey, we are going to cover like we have the money to cover that 3.3 billion. That's what they said. Then why do we depeg? And then why do we repeg? Like the the what the question becomes is the mechanics of the pegging and depegging, right? Right. Uh -huh. Has to do with the minting and, and burning of the mechanism because yeah. of the cash reserves, right? For sure. But all we had was words. Hey, money. Tied up, gone, three point yep. three billion, yep. and then once again the sentiment when the FDIC came out and said we are going to make sure everybody is whole and start giving out money again, even though they haven't received the three point three billion, just by saying the words that we will cover it, the repeg happened. So How if the money isn't actually there just yet? What happened to the mechanism of minting and burning and the cash reserves having to be there? So I obviously can't give you the technical no, answer, but what it looks, nobody what, knows. What, we, we, we don't know, but what it looks as if, as if when the information came out, there was almost like a, a bank run on some stable coins. Cause they're like, Oh shoot, we're going to have a problem. Boom. All of a sudden it depegs. The company circle looks at it and says, Oh crap, we got a problem. They let it sit for a day because it is $3.3 .3 billion. I guess, you know what I mean? Trying to figure out in the background, what are we going to do? Then they contact whoever they, the, the thing is, is that they're all in bed together. Right. We know that the, the, these these massive institutions are all at the dinner parties. And so that, yeah. How did it technically happen? I don't know. But ultimately, a lot of this is optics, man. You know that it, it is what's going to happen. And it's fear mongering. And then it's and, and then it's greed. And it's every you know what I mean? It's up, down, sideways, left, right. And so just pay attention. This is part of the reason that you guys should be watching Debate Crypto Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are talking about the real discussions. Why are things happening? What can you do to protect yourself? How to have a diversified portfolio? We're here for entertainment, but we want you guys to be protected. We wear these vests just in case bullets go Should flying while we're on the stream. We got to be protected. <laughs> I mean, it ain't no joke about in these streets. I'm telling you what. Um, but no, we, we we ultimately are here to help you guys lead God and direct you know through some of that yeah. so guys if smash you like those that likes. yeah i was gonna say if you like that smash yeah, those, smash likes. those likes we got 50 okay. people in here we got 24 likes let's go let's get those numbers up let's make sure you hit that subscribe you're not subscribed already and the bell notification the bell. to get all the notifications of when we go live guys okay um, so what do we got next well let's talk about the 30k thing okay let's get so it yesterday... i got some charts i want to show on that Okay, great. So yesterday you said, I think we're going to 30K. And you talked about that for a minute. Okay. 
Now I see an article today that your boy Max Kaiser is calling for 30K. So he predicted it will break above 30K. He was watching me yesterday. That's what happened. Ah, uh, I knew it. I knew that made sense. Max Kaiser was sitting there watching, watching Crusaders saying, what's he thinking? Because that's what I'm thinking. So, but the, the interesting thing is, though, on top of making the $30,000 prediction, he took a he took a jab at uh, CZ, mentioning CZ shorts. Um, and I don't know, man, I feel like a lot of times all of these, all of these, these, these higher ups, these people are all just kind of jockeying for for optically like looking a certain way within the space they yeah, want to be I right mean, they want to make somebody else look dumb it's max it's kaiser like, is a bitcoin man. maxi right he's always uh -huh. gonna say big it's just like michael saylor saying right. something about bitcoin being uh pro bitcoin right it's like it's obvious you're a you're a bitcoin maximalist like all you believe in is in bitcoin you don't think anything negative about it so you're always gonna say we're gonna go up yeah. And so the majority of the what he was what he was referring to is the majority of the liquidated positions were shorts and they were set. There was seventy seven point three eight percent to be exact of liquidations were on Binance. OK, so dun, dun, he dun. yeah. So he was taking a, He was taking a shot at him. It was uh, let's see here. There was like three hundred and fourteen million dollars worth of crypto liquidated. Now, here's the interesting thing. OK, here's where the conspiratorial side comes in. So while all these people are being liquidated and all of this is happening, he is converting. I, I was thinking this through earlier. The, 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 he is converting BUSD to Bitcoin and Ethereum as the price is booming up and people on their, on their exchange are getting liquidated. Is this a coincidence? Wait, say that one more time. So all of these people are getting liquidated on shorts. He's able to see on Binance. He is a he. Is, this is the same Binance that is taking BUSD, converting it into Bitcoin. As all of those are getting liquidated and the price is shooting up, they can see this in the background. How much information do they really have before? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, that dude, information's there. I don't know. I I thought, from my understanding, that they haven't started yet. This, even though this pump has been happening, everybody, oh, it's because CZ is changing into, he's, he's buying up Bitcoin. From my understanding, I saw something that the funds are still, they haven't whole, even started it yet. One billion dollars is still in BUSD. They haven't started that process just yet. So that would be, be surprising. I don't know. But this does go back to what normally we talk about, especially on TA Thursday and around the charts and all that stuff is, you know, Everyone sees the same charts. Everybody can see how many shorts versus how many longs right. are in the market right now. Right. And big players say, okay, we got enough shorts in here. It's time to make this baby run and liquidate them. And the same way the other way, right? Everybody gets extremely bullish. All right, there's enough longs here. It's time to liquidate these fools. Let's push it back down. So right. they, everyone sees this, right? The big players see this and they can make these markets move in this way or that way. But that leads me to the chart that I wanted to show you about Bitcoin going to 30K. Uh, so let me pull up my screen here real quick. Which, by the way, 30K is not happening. We'll get into that in a minute after he shows you this. Well, yeah, because it's dropped, it's dropped back down to 24.5. Relax. <laughs> it's just a small little drop. <laughs> let me show you here what I was talking about when it comes to these charts. So this is from Twitter. Right? I got two charts here uh, from Titan of Crypto. So shout out to him or, or her. Or them, or or, or whatever, something, whatever they are, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever they are. So here, in the rate of change of Bitcoin, you guys can see here we had these phases of accumulation, right? And it was the bottoming of the previous bear cycle of 2015 before we ran up in 2017. Same thing in 2019, the bottom, right? Accumulation down here. We hit this green line area, which is 1.6. I don't know exactly what this 1.6 represents, but it's the zone of maximum opportunity, apparently. And then once again, it seems like we've been down here in this accumulation zone accumulating. And if you can see here the smallest little speck of hope, we have crossed past that line, right? We've, we've come back above the zone of accumulation, leading to the fact that maybe this is the bottom. And every time we've seen this cross back over, right, we've had a rally. Cross back over, rally, cross back over, rally. So could this be the beginning, of, not of the bear, not of the bull market, but at least of another massive rally up to maybe that 40, 50K like Ben has been talking about uh, for the end of this year? 
I don't see it. Um, I will you don't tell see you, the chart, or you don't. No, see... I can see the chart. I can see the chart, and if it's on Twitter, it's got to be true. So I'm, hey, I'm, I'm with you. The it's charts impossible. don't lie, bro. That's right. The charts don't lie. But I got another chart for you. Oh, you got another. In case okay, you didn't cool, believe that one. Okay, cool. I don't believe that one. So show me the next one. Let me see. So I got one. another chart here. Shows you here again from the same uh, person or whatever. Uh, says it took 465 days, right? for bitcoin to close a daily candle above the 350 daily moving average once it happened in the past cycles bitcoin ended having a local top somewhere between the blue and red lines so approximately right now it'd be 38 to 47,000. so as you guys can see here in the past right we were down here under the 350 daily moving average we crossed and then we started to top out right eventually somewhere around there same thing over here. We were under, we crossed over, we had a local top, we came back down, we once again then spent, uh, that, was that was 342 days. Then now, fast forward over here, 465 days, we have just begun to cross back above that mm -hmm. line. So yeah. if we were to follow this pattern once again, somewhere between the blue and the red, we are between approximately 38,000 and 47,000. Mm. Let me tell you, I hope I'm wrong. Let me just throw that out there. So I hope I'm wrong because I'd love to see, I'd love to see a pump. I will go back to two things. Number one, whenever everybody all of a sudden starts to get bullish, right? It invariably goes the other direction. So I'll be the contrarian on this for one. And number two, and this is where I think it's it's really important to understand. Charts are a beautiful thing. Okay. They work very well. People make great money. Shout out to Magic Internet Money. Uh, oh, pause real quick. We are still going to be doing, and that'll be coming up soon. We'll have that set up here soon for the 50 seats. I think we're going to do 50 seats or so. I think something like that yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for an intro to TA. So if you want to interact with Magic and do an intro into TA, we'll be doing that soon. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the more information on that. Um, so so the I just threw myself off. So the, So the problem is, the charts are telling us one thing and they're beautiful, but the freaking economy, man, is not. That's not going to change overnight. We might, might, might see a short run if they decide to start slowing down interest rates. Maybe eat, they're not going to be firing up a printing press yet, I don't think, but maybe start firing up a printing press. We'll get a, a, a short little run. But I just, I see this as a bull trap. I see this as being an opportunity for them to hype it up, play some games with us, talk about stable coins, show basically every downfall of crypto in the news. And to do that, it needs to be forefront. It can't just be going on in the background. When people say, nobody's talking about crypto. No, they need to make you talk about crypto. And how do you do that? People, more people are on the streams when it's pumping. More people are on the streams when it's dumping. When things are boring, nobody's talking about crypto, supposedly. We are every day. But nobody's talking about crypto. And there's no way to push that news out. But when things are wild are happening in the space, that's when the news gets pushed up. So, so they start a pump, a big pump after a big dump. You see both sides of that. Now, all of a sudden, we got everybody bullish. Our economy still freaking sucks. We're still going down. We're still going to see, I think, a lower low. I don't know. Well, all I see is the dollar going down and Bitcoin going up, baby, because that but that fi that printer is going to be fired up because mm. I will be 100%, 100,000% surprised if we don't get a rate cut before the end of this year with the way things are going. So, but, but, okay, so let's say that happens. So we get a, we get a rate cut. Let's even say they fire up the printing press. That doesn't change all the other economic factors for, are, are, are you, if they fire up the printing press, they usually can't stop that for a while. That's usually like a, a, a Bitcoin a, blast off time up and to the right. But it, would that be a problem with the happening not happening yet? Wouldn't that no. possibly throw things off of where they really no. should well, be or have been what, in the look, past look what happened la uh last cycle right when the fog around the world happened a massive collapse into the market that was technically not forecasted for bitcoin to go that low happened and then we spent all of 2020 recovering pretty aggressively into the happening right and then we we, we blasted off we kept blasting off into all-time highs so i think um i think you know and ben's mentioned it that you know if that does happen, I think that would be one of the catalysts to push Bitcoin between that, you know, forty to fifty thousand 
price point for Bitcoin this year mm -hmm. and then going into that or into the happening. And then, you know, just that could be the super cycle catalyst that we've been ex waiting for is the money printer getting shot back on. And, you know, yeah, the economy is bad, but they're going to have to put that thing on life support, just like they have a Biden on life support and keep things pumping <laughs> because it's it's the only way it's it's, it's the death by printing it's slow yeah. death by printing because mm -hmm. if not it's a quick collapse to the bottom and yeah. we saw how banks can quickly just poof gone one day to the next yeah i hope i'm wrong i still think i still do think that we're going to see a uh, a lower low unfortunately i do think that's going to be economically inspired hi baby um i think addison wants to no she's that's okay she's fine she's she's tired uh addison wanted to remind everybody grab your hardware wallets you got a ledger link down below but she is tired and waving at everybody from the door so she says hello and she loves you guys okay so i want to throw out two comments here david big supporter of the show appreciate you bro they've already fired up the printing press they did that with their new form of quantitative easing on monday morning they created a brand new way to create new money the printer is already going that's good that's that's a very interesting thought and then here's another one from visionary vet shout out to visionary vet this may be the beginning of the end for legacy markets this will change everything okay let's talk about this one real quick do we really believe this because i don't there's not a chance legacy markets are going away there's not a chance that they're going to allow these companies to crumble there's not a chance that that's actually where we're headed. I think we're just going to see a shift and a change, hopefully moving towards blockchain, which would be beautiful. But there's just not a chance these legacy markets are going anywhere anytime soon. They're not going to collapse from overnight, right? It's a slow process. Just how everyone in crypto always talks about when we have mass adoption, when we have a mass adoption, we're living the mass adoption every single day. So it feels like we don't have mass adoption. But we are having mass adoption because we have countries adopting Bitcoin. We have countries talking about it and using it and, and all the stuff with NFTs and crypto and all, all the things that are That's happening. But it's day to day for us. It feels like we're we're still waiting for that mass adoption to happen. But let's just look back four years ago how different things were. Yeah. Nobody even imagined that by this point there would already be a whole country running on Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to the legacy markets, yes, they're not going to disappear. <laughs> Bricks disagrees. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point, bro. That's a real good point. <laughs> They're not going to disappear, but they are definitely going to be changing. And I think they are changing, right? We've seen a lot of things happening in the Middle East with China and how they're kind of shifting towards the yuan, right? And I think what the underlying foundation that is changing is the U.S. dollar's dominance is what's changing in the yes, legacy that's markets. that's definitely happening. And moving more, like you said, to a blockchain crypto uh, financial system one way or another just how we went from uh from cash to checks from checks to uh to credit cards and now we've gone from credit cards to uh instant payments with with uh with the phone with the venmo cash app all that stuff and now we've moved on to crypto as well i think the banking system is also having one of those transitions and okay. it's just a slow process that we don't see day to day so interesting so really interesting take i like that a lot I see these, uh, if these legacy markets start to change, decentralization has always been this, uh, you know, this, this buzzword in the space. And it's what everybody's pushing for, but it's a really hard thing to actually achieve because at the end of the day, things have to happen in the background. Nobody works for free. People need to make money. There's a lot of, of problems that run in if you just try to put everything on a smart contract. There's stuff that needs to happen where people need to get paid and they need to work. And so you can cause problems, right? But this is really interesting, okay? Coinbase is bringing DeFi to their platform. And I think this is like something to pay attention to. So they're bringing Uniswap and Aave. We've heard recently about its base blockchain, uh, which is their, their the, the network's layer two that's built on Ethereum, on Optimism, technically on Optimism built on Ethereum. Um, and so I think this is interesting. So Uniswap and Aave are, how are they going to use this, right? So like, what is the benefit for a centralized exchange to then bring in? Is it is it transaction is it transaction fees again? Just basically bringing them home. Is that effectively what they're going to be doing here? Or why would Coinbase take a take a decentralized application, toss it on their platform, and say, "Hey, we'll work with that." Is it anything other than just transaction fees? Just the just what you would see come you know just right up in your face. 
Yeah, dude. I mean, definitely transaction fees is going to be something that is going to be on their minds, right? How can they? How can we get more transactions on the platform to yeah. get more money? Uh, and it's just the easiest way to make money. But they also understand that DeFi, even though it's doesn't, it didn't work last cycle, right? We saw a lot of crash. We saw a lot of uh, you know hopes and dreams crashing and burning. Uh, DeFi is still something that they're striving for in the space. And as a major player in the game, they need to position themselves, right? Their exchange is kind of behind a lot of other exchanges. A lot of other exchanges provide a lot more services than what Coinbase does. So Coinbase is now using this opportunity to start bringing DeFi, putting some level of control. And we know that they're always going to play along with the regulations. Yep. So they are probably in the background somewhere setting up a move towards proper regulation so that they can keep DeFi, a version of DeFi at least, alive that will benefit them and continue to provide more services for newcomers onto the space because coinbase is used as the on-ramp where the newbies jump in they buy something and then they yep. fly off into another exchange with more services another place they go into dexes and all these things coinbase wants to make sure hey we're already on-ramping all these guys here we need to keep them here and i think that's what they're going for that's a yeah i i I'm, I'm with it i think it also shows the value that they see maybe not so much in decentralization but they see that other people see value in using these dApps and say hey like other people see value in it we should at least open our eyes to the fact that this could be something long term that could help our platform and yeah they're going to bring them bring them home somebody said uh keep keeping them under a secured umbrella again visionary bet got a good one there keeping them under secured umbrella and so keep an eye on this as we continue to see the crypto markets the exchange uh the exchange what's the word i'm looking for just kind of the environment change we need to pay attention to it because it's going to go i believe one of two ways it's Are going you talking to talk about climate change uh definitely not we're not allowed to talk about that okay we have been scolded for that um the the exchange the exchange climate is changing is it going to move towards the old school legacy financial banking system like totally is it going to move that way or are we going to see some of these massive conglomerates push towards using smart contracts in a way that no one are they going to truly push in to the 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 blockchain space are they going to effectively allow applications to run on top of their platform that otherwise are decentralized and it looks like coinbase is saying hey we'll at least give it a try and so I'm interested to see, you know, kind of how that plays out. Could be, yeah, for sure. Could be a good thing for the space, I think, as a whole. Smash that like if you haven't already. We got 66 people in the chat. Hopefully, everybody is doing well. I do want to take just a quick break for a joke. Two peanuts were walking through the park. One was assaulted. <laughs> okay, good one. I like it. Uh, dad jokes for the win. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, you see us pushing 30k. I don't. I see us going back down. We've been rejected multiple times at 25K. I think we're headed back down. Uh, whether we're going to be headed back down for you know a longer period of time or not, I still see and I'm still standing by this some sort of event happening this year. And I've been talking about it. I'm not going to stop talking about it. Some sort of a macro event that's going to happen that I believe is going to take us further down. But here's the key. We are not financial advisors. We are not telling you to buy. We are not telling you not to buy. We are just speculating on what we see in these markets. But what I will tell you is that long term, a $25,000 Bitcoin is going to be a daggone good thing to look back at and say, man, I wish I would have taken some more. Bro, just remember how many people talked about 25K Bitcoin when we were at 69, mm -hmm. when we were at 40, right? Yep. People were like, Man, when they get to 25, That's right. I'm I'm loading up the truck, baby. Uh -huh. I'm putting it all into Bitcoin. I ain't gonna <laughs> I ain't gonna let that slip back it up, time baby. Ever yeah. again. Now we're at 25. We're like, hold on, hold on. Wait we, till it gets to 15. Well, no, let's wait. Let's wait a little bit longer. Let's wait. <laughs> we we went all the way to 15, and they're like, let's wait a little bit longer. It could go to 10. It could go to five. Always, right? always. So it's always the same narrative. When you're at 25 in the bull market. Everybody's excited. When you're 25 in the bear market, everybody's depressed. And it's like, yo, that's just the way of the game. And you have to get in at some point. If you're expecting to catch this bottom all the time or just waiting for this bottom, right? If we did bottom, 
everyone waiting for 10K completely missed opportunities yes. of buying at 15. Yes. What, and now they're buying at 25, 24, yes. right? Yes. $10,000 above that. It right? is, in the long term, yep. it doesn't really matter. It's, it's, a buck, it's a drop in the bucket. But nonetheless, just goes to prove the point. You missed it because you kept waiting for lower mm-hmm. and lower. At some point, the market will turn. Whether 15 was the bottom or not, there will be a bottom. And once we get to those lower levels, even if we drop to 10 next week, people will say, I'm going to wait for five. Because oh, we're yeah. going to go down to five. That's a fact. And they're not going to buy 10. So then when we bust when we bust back up to 30, they're like, ah, wait maybe, for it to drop maybe back to I should have bought one that goes down to 20 again. <laughs> right? And it's like, dude, just you got to get in at some point. Not financial yeah. advice. But that, that mindset is what makes people sit on the sidelines and always miss the bottoms and miss the tops. Crypto fam, this entire show has been brought to you by Danger Close Alpha, as always. DangerCloseAlpha.com. Make sure to check us out. We are currently still minting our bullets, beans, and bourbon. Those are our commodities. We'd love to have you be a part of the uh, of the clan. We ultimately are giving away five Ethereum. Somebody is going to win. One person is going to win five Ethereum. We've got a game that's getting ready to start soon. Really excited for that. So if you are interested, DangerCloseAlpha.com. Jump into the community. Everything's about preparation. What are you watching this show for right now? Hopefully to get you better prepared in the crypto space. We'll jump over to Danger Close Alpha and we'll help you get you better prepared in just your everyday life of, you know. Doing... And every 100 mints, somebody's oh, yeah? going to get a vest, right? Somebody's going to get a vest. I think we're like about 40 mints away, give or From take a little bit. For the next vest to be given away. So, guys, get ready. Somebody's going to yeah. be taking these vests. We're going to be giving 13 of these things away. That's 13 right. 13 of them. Tonight, 9 p.m. Don't miss it. We have got a Twitter space. We are going to be talking specifically about bank runs. And y'all already know, if you jump on a Twitter, we go hard on Twitter. Because, you know, your boy Elon, depending on how you look at him, allows us to say things that we sure as heck can't say here on YouTube. We definitely get in trouble. Uh, So make sure to check us out 9 p.m. on the Twitter space. We're going to have some fun with that this evening, every Tuesday and Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, Crypto Fam. Well, we appreciate you for being here. As always, you could be anywhere on a gloomy Tuesday afternoon, but you are here with Debate Crypto. Markets are pumping. We appreciate you. Just remember, question everything. Trust nothing. And until next time, hodl. Like it's hot. We'll see you soon.